So it appears aphids have decided to uh, set up shop here on my Japanese long bean, which kind of sucks, dude, because this guy is actually starting to earn its keep, you know? Now that being said, I'm not saying that just because I have aphids I'm gonna lose this plant. I'm pretty sure that I'm not. Um, aphids in kind of low to moderate uh, numbers really don't cause that much damage. Although they can spread viruses in small numbers. Aphids are those small soft body insects that descend on your plant by the thousands, if not more. In fact, if I were just to sit back here and not do anything to this plant, there's a really good chance that this thing would just be covered in aphids within a matter of days, you know? It doesn't take that long. But see, that's just it. That the aphids only real line of defense is by the number. You know, they don't run. Beep, beep, run away, aphid. You know, <laughs> they don't run. They don't bite. Aphid. I should have just killed it. I mean, I don't know why I try to put it back. And they don't fly away, at least not yet. They really don't have any real defense other than in their numbers, you know? Strength in numbers. I once heard that one single female aphid could be responsible for upwards of 600 billion, billion aphid descendants within the course of one season. Dude, did you ever count to 600 billion? Nope. Hell no, we ain't counting 600 billion, man. So we can't confirm or deny that, but what I will not deny is that aphids know how to reproduce, you know what I'm saying? And their numbers can get astronomical. Now at this stage of the game, aphids come out asexual. They're all females that don't need males to reproduce. Now if you look really hard, you can see like this little grayish pink dots underneath a black dot. Now the black dot is an adult aphid. The little grayish pink dots those are baby aphids. If you look even harder, you'll notice there's no egg. Those little grayish pink dots are all live born aphids, more than likely from that black dot, that adult aphid. Um, yeah, there's no eggs involved in this game. Aphids got rid of that. So now they can actually reproduce even faster. Now it's only gonna take a week for those female baby aphids to become adult aphids and give birth to an umpteenth amount of female baby aphids within the course of a day. Then a week after that, those female baby aphids are gonna become adult aphids and give birth to an umpteenth amount of female baby aphids within the course of a day. And let's not forget the original mom who's still giving birth as we speak. They have the number game just on lock. Dude, aphids are, <laughs> aphids are so beast. I've seen a big variety of different types of aphids on my plants uh, throughout the years. I've seen white aphids, I've seen black aphids, which I believe these ones are. I've seen these green emerald looking aphids. I've seen this real pretty reddish pink looking aphid. It sucked to kill that one, but I did it. I've even heard of soil aphids that like to attack your roots. Um, knock on wood, I haven't encountered those guys yet. So there's a wide variety of aphids out there. Woolly aphids and they all pretty much get down the same way. Now seeing the way that this plant's being attacked, I wouldn't be surprised to find winged aphids. A female aphid will only give birth to a winged aphid when there's too much competition going on in that plant. So when their population numbers are way high, that is when you start seeing winged aphids come up. So those winged aphids can now split and jump on another plant. Now it's at this point that a female aphid has to find a male aphid, lay eggs, and start the process all over. Come on. So aphids kind of tell you when they're getting out of hand because they know themselves when they're getting out of hand. Now what makes aphids such a problem is that they get on your plant and begin to suck fluids out of your plant. Those fluids that they're sucking out contain a lot of sugar. So in turn the aphid begins to secrete a sugary substance called honeydew. Now honeydew could cause sooty mold, a black fungus that could slow photosynthesis. Another thing that the honeydew does is start to attract ants. The ants then come up for the honeydew and begin to protect the aphids. So that's why you often see ants and aphids together. The aphid gets to eat all day and it gets the protection of the ant while the ant just kind of patrols like the aphid colony, I guess, and um, gets a free sip of this honeydew all the time. And when it comes time for me to battle aphids, I often use a combination of things. One of the biggest things are my hands. Death to you all because you all suck. Dead aphid, look at that. Yuck. So one thing I've noticed while killing aphids manually is that they like to hang out near the part of the plant that's going to flower. I'm assuming there's more sugar and nutrient that they're looking for up there, I'm not exactly sure. But anyhow, I need to be really cognizant of that. 
because that part of the plant is extremely fragile. And the last thing I want to do is break any of those off. I mean, I'm here to try to make long beans, not take them away. Now, if I had caught this aphid infestation any sooner, me coming in here and doing it manually probably would have been all I needed to do to take care of my situation. But seeing as though I didn't catch this aphid infestation any sooner, I need to call in my big guns. And that's spraying either with neem's oil or in this case, some soapy water. Now, just like with most organic remedies, what's needed for the recipe is probably something that you already have laying around your house. As you can see, this is just pretty much your typical uh, dish soap and water. Now, what I'm gonna be doing is using eight teaspoons of dish soap to one gallon of water. A lot of times I will put a uh, clove of garlic in this, but I'm not gonna do it this time. The reason I put the garlic in there is because insects don't really like the smell of garlic. At the same time, by doing that, your whole entire garden is gonna smell like garlic, so kinda of do it at your own risk, you know what I'm saying? I think it's pretty safe to say that I can be very wary when it comes to spraying new things on my plants. So what I normally do is start off with a weaker mixture and then over time begin to strengthen that mixture as needed. Um, another thing that you want to be wary about is spraying antibacterial soap on your plants. It's something you don't want to do. Another thing if you notice, I had the water in my bottle first and then I put the, the soap into it. Uh, you don't want to put the soap at the bottom and then add the water, you know what I'm saying? Uh, a friend of mine told me that it'll just start to bubble up. It's my friend. The homie. All right, now that I have my concoction all mixed up here, I just add it to my spray bottle. Really gotta tell you, man, it's very, very important. If there's like a couple things that I think you should probably go out and buy and actually spend some money on, a good spray bottle is definitely one of the things you should get. Yeah, it's all mixed up. Pour that right in. Pump this bad boy up. Now you ready to rock and roll? Now pretty much just as a rule, I only spray during the more mild parts of the day, either in the morning before I go to work, or like I've been experimenting with more this season, uh, more towards the evening. The reason being is that this soap is a drying agent. Basically it hits the aphids and then over time it just begins to extract all the fluid out of the aphid. Now it's also to a certain extent going to be extracting moisture from my leaves. So I really want to be cognizant as to when I treat my plant. You know what I'm saying? It gets really hot here in California, man. And the last thing I want is to put a drying agent during the hottest part of the day on my leaves just so it could bake on it. It seems like to me that that's going to be causing a lot more problems than actually helping anything out. So. I always spray during the more milder part of the day. So far, I gotta say it's been working. Now, I normally only spray, at least at the start, about once a week. And then I will start to up the dosage as needed. You know, this plant is starting to get to about twice a week now. Now, with neem's oil, I try not to go over three times a week, even that is kind of pushing it for me. I don't really like to do too much of neem's oil. My mixture of neem's oil is typically one ounce per gallon, and then I'll adjust that as needed as well. Now with uh, soapy water and stuff, I normally probably only do that three times a week as well. Outside of that, everything else is just gonna be uh, manually, you know? Just go in with my hands and take them out like that. Now with all that being said, like I just said, this is a drying agent, so you really want to make sure you're hitting the aphid directly. Otherwise, this isn't going to work. So you really want to get in there, get those real hard to reach places that the aphids like to hide. You really spray that down, you know? There's some. You really want to aim for those tips like I talked about before. And what you should see is your aphids starting to turn from whatever color they are into black. Then I'm going to go to like a brown and then a black. Now I know it's hard to tell because these aphids were already black, but notice there's no ants. Now a lot of times after I treat my plants, I like to go back over it with some compost tea. Not every time, you know, not every single time, especially not three times a week. I normally compost tea at least once a week anyway, so. 
I like to do it after I've uh, I've treated my plant just to add back some of the nutrients you know like I said before I mean ultimately I am drying out my plant as well or I am taking away from my plant as well so you know it's cool to try to put something back in it now one cool thing about this aphid infestation is that it's starting to attract ladybugs yes ladybugs are showing up by themselves and eating aphids which is awesome because i've released i don't know how many ladybugs over the years and for whatever reason it never really worked for me another reason that i like to use soapy water is because it doesn't really seem to affect the ladybugs that much man they seem to be cool with it garden porn now another method that i've heard of getting rid of aphids is spraying them with a jet of water now you don't want to have so much pressure that it puts holes or damages your leaves or anything you just want enough that's going to uh actually remove the aphid from the plant. And again, they're soft body, so that jet of water probably is enough to actually be killing them. Um, so it might work, and I've actually seen people do that, and a lot of organic gardeners do that, and they swear by it. So hey, you know, that's something that's probably worth trying as well. Uh, what I would do is just kind of flip the leaf over, kind of hold it, and then spray it with the water. You know, but anyway, that's about all I got for uh, my aphid control. If you have anything more that you want to add to this, dude, please feel free. Now, if you have a technique or a story on how you kept ladybugs in your garden, let us know that as well. Outside of that, don't forget to subscribe, and you can also follow me on Instagram. I'm Justin Gay. This is Season Zadidu, y'all. Peace. Damn chair. Hey, smooth, man. Okay, bye-bye.